8. The Tirpitz Built by Nazi Germany in the late 1930s, the Tirpitz was one of two Kriegsmarine Bismarck-class armored battleships during World War II. Outweighing its sister ship, the Bismarck, by 2,000 tons, it was the heaviest European naval battleship in its history. The Tirpitz was a formidable force, one which British Prime Minister Winston Churchill wanted to squash as soon as possible. He saw it as a major threat to Allied shipping routes, particularly those heading to the Soviet Union with desperately needed supplies and reinforcements. The British Royal Navy poured significant resources into maintaining a substantial presence, capable of containing the battleship if necessary, which was certainly a wise move. But in the 1942 wake of the Allied raid on the German Saint Nazaire submarine base in France, the Nazis deemed it too risky to attempt any counterattacks against Atlantic shipping lanes. The ship spent most of its short lived career stationed in waters off German occupied Norway, where its role was to stop an Allied invasion. In 1942, it participated in two attempts to intercept Allied shipping convoys in the Arctic Sea region. Throughout the following year, the Tirpitz fought against enemy positions in Norway. It received significant damage in late 1943 from sustained air raids, but continued serving in the area for another year. In late 1944, British bombers dropped three massive 12,000-pound bombs on the Tirpitz. It started to capsize rapidly while a deck fire spread to one of its ammunition magazines, causing a major explosion. Somewhere between 950 and 1,200 German sailors died that day in the disaster, and the wreck was later broken up after the war. 7. Missing Mark I Tank Blueprints The first tank ever used in actual combat was the British-made Mark I. It was designed in 1915 to help break the stalemate of World War I trench warfare by allowing Allied troops along the Western Front to traverse through craters and ram straight through barbed wire. The Mark I played an integral role in winning the war and changed the very nature of modern warfare as a whole. It made its first appearance in 1916 at the Battle of the Somme. Legend says that when an enemy soldier saw the tank approaching for the first time, they shouted, The Devil is Coming! The only surviving Mark I is found at the Tank Museum in Dorset. For years, its blueprint was missing, leaving many elements of its design a mystery to modern engineers. The two places where the blueprint would most likely be, the Tank Museum and Britain's Imperial War Museum, didn't have it, leading to the belief that it was most likely lost forever at some point in the conflict. In 2018, famous engineer and TV host Guy Martin tried to build a Mark I replica based on what was known about the tank. Dubbed the Deborah II, it took five months to build and had a top speed of only four miles per hour. Needless to say, it wasn't a huge success. The blueprint was miraculously rediscovered in 2021 by a private owner whose family had been in possession of it for over a century. Thanks to financial support from former Royal Tank Regiment Officer Tim Allen, the Tank Museum bought the blueprint at auction for £14,600. This part of history is now in the hands of capable historians. 6. Horton Ho 229 The German-made Horton Ho 229 was a prototype fighter aircraft designed during the later half of World War II. As the first tailless aircraft or flying wing powered by jet engines, it was essentially a forerunner to today's stealth bombers. The Ho 229 was developed in response to a call for a light bomber capable of carrying 2,200 pounds of bombs over a long 620-mile distance. At the time, jet propulsion was still in its infant stages, and jet engines consumed a high amount of fuel. The aircraft designers saw the flying wing configuration as a way to maximize aerodynamic efficiency, and to minimize its drag, they avoided adding any features that weren't absolutely necessary for function. Several prototypes of the Ho 229 were created, and over 100 of the fighters were pre-ordered in anticipation of its mass production. The first prototype was an unpowered glider. The second was successful, capable of flying at altitudes up to 49,000 feet in the air and reaching speeds of 600 miles per hour falling just 20 miles per hour short of its intended speed. It completed two successful test flights, but met engine trouble during the third and crashed. V2 was completely destroyed, 
and its pilot died a few weeks later from his injuries. The third prototype, V-3, was still being built when US forces seized it in an intelligence gathering mission called Operation Paperclip. There were two other prototypes in the early stages of being built, but the military took the V-3 because it was closest to completion. British and American researchers analyzed the aircraft before it was put into long-term storage, where it remained until its restoration in 2011. Although incomplete, it's the only surviving example of the Ho-229, which influenced the design of many iconic American stealth fighters like the B-2 and the F-117. It's now on permanent display at the Smithsonian's Udva Hazy Center in Chantilly, Virginia. 5. HMS Dreadnought Built in 1905 and 1906 for the British Royal Navy, the HMS Dreadnought revolutionized battleship technology and set the precedent for the future generations of battleships. The appropriately named vessel, whose name translates to Fear Nothing in Old English, was created to be well-armored, well-armed, and fast. Until then, most naval ships were either built to withstand heavy fire, but slow, or fast with not much protection. The Dreadnought boasted more than twice the firepower of the usual battleship of its time. With state-of-the-art fire control, telescopic sighting technology, and more, it put all other battleships to shame. It was the first vessel of its kind to have a uniform main battery, instead of a few large guns supplemented by some smaller weapons. It was also capable of taking a significant beating. The ship was equipped with five 12-inch twin turret guns that each had a range of 14.2 miles, as well as 24 12-pounder or 76mm guns, each with a range of 5.3 miles. But it wasn't just the weapons themselves that made Dreadnought superior. It was the advanced electronic range transmitting equipment and state-of-the-art systems which made the use of the weapons incredibly accurate and efficient. Despite its capabilities, the Dreadnought didn't see much action. It wasn't able to participate in any of the war's naval battles, which limited its wartime accomplishments to the sinking of German U-boat SMU-29 in 1915. The ship was sold off to a private buyer in 1920 and was scrapped the next year. Although the Dreadnought experienced a fairly uneventful career, it went down in history for rendering all battleships before it obsolete and for sparking a global naval race, which peaked between 1909 and 1912 before the First World War. By 1920, almost 120 Dreadnought-type ships had been built around the world. To this day, steel battleships from before the Dreadnought's era are still referred to as pre-Dreadnoughts. Four. Ryan FR-1 Fireball Designed for the US Navy during World War II, the Ryan FR Fireball was powered by both piston and jet engines. Its manufacturer, Ryan Aeronautical, made an agreement with the military to develop three FR-1 prototypes back in 1943. The FR-1 prototype was the Navy's first jet aircraft. Its designers used a mixed power engine system because jet engines in that time had slow acceleration, which was considered unsafe and inappropriate for use on aircraft carriers. There were four M2 Browning machine guns mounted on the center of the jet's wings, and the aircraft was also capable of carrying four 5-inch rockets under each outer wing panel. The prototype flew for the first time in 1944, but quickly ran into problems. All three test crafts were lost due to wing failure. The plane's designers solved the problem later on by doubling the number of rivets on the wings, and the Navy put in an order for 700 aircraft. But by the time the FR-1 rolled off the production line, World War I was practically over. Only 66 were made, and they never even saw combat. It was only assigned to one squadron, where it was in the company of superior aircraft powered by jet engines alone instead of a mixed-engine system. The FR-1 was withdrawn from service in 1947 and was essentially forgotten altogether after its brief career. Almost all 66 examples were scrapped, with just a few being saved for modifications and testing purposes. Today, the only survivor is housed at the Plains of Fame Air Museum in Chino, California. While the Fireball came and went without much fanfare, it still made its mark in military aviation history. After all, it was the Navy's first jet aircraft.
3. Cultivator Number 6 At the beginning of World War II, the British Royal Navy designed a massive trench-digging machine codenamed the White Rabbit No. 6. It went by a few other names, including NLE Tractors, The Mole, and Cultivator No. 6. Lightly armored and equipped with barely any weapons, the unconventional vehicle was meant to dig a trench as it advanced upon an enemy position. It was the brainchild of Winston Churchill, who feared an all-out war at a time when international conflict was the last thing a lot of Europeans wanted. Acting on lessons learned from World War I, he believed the machine would be capable of effortlessly crossing through no man's land in the dark to break a stalemate in trench warfare. At his suggestion, the War Department reluctantly went along with the idea and approved the construction of a fleet of cultivators. Measuring 77 feet long and weighing 130 tons, the prototype trench cutter, nicknamed Nelly, was an incredibly large machine. Based on what Churchill required, the vehicle's designers outfitted the prototype with a plow-like device capable of removing the top portion of a trench. From there, a rotating cutting attachment would dig the bottom half. The soil would be placed beside the trench and the wings on the machine's plow blade would keep it from falling back inside. Cultivator No. 6 was one of the heaviest and largest military vehicles during its time, and it served its purpose well. Sadly, there was no practical use for it, and although it was still under development when it was realized the next conflict would not be a trench war, Churchill failed to call the project off when he should have. Five of the vehicles were produced before he finally gave in and brought the construction to end. All of the known examples were scrapped in the 1950s. 2. Shokaku Aircraft Carrier The Shokaku was an Imperial Japanese Navy aircraft carrier built in the late 1930s. Construction of the 845-foot-long vessel was carried out in secret to avoid the prying eyes of other curious countries. By the time it was finished, the Shokaku was the Imperial Navy's most advanced carrier and one of the top vessels of its kind in the whole world. Manned by a crew of 1,660 sailors, it was equipped with three elevators that moved planes from the hangar decks up to the main deck quickly. The ship was also known for its comfortable living quarters, which were designed to keep the crew's morale high. The Shokaku participated in several key naval battles in the Pacific, including the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Battle of the Coral Sea, and the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands. During the Battle of the Philippine Sea in 1944, the ship was hit repeatedly by American torpedoes. The captain then gave the order to abandon ship, but it sank too quickly for most men to escape in time, taking 1,272 sailors with it to the sea floor. 1. Sikorsky JRS-1 Nicknamed the Flying Pickup Truck for its bulky exterior, the Sikorsky JRS-1 amphibious plane was used by the U.S. Navy during the 1940s for a few different non-combat activities, including taking aerial photographs and delivering mail to troops stationed in the Hawaiian Islands. Measuring 51 feet long, it was the military's version of the Sikorsky S-43 Baby Clipper. Only 20 were ever made, and 10 were stationed at Pearl Harbor when the Japanese attacked on December 7, 1941. Only one JRS survived that day, and it remains the only example of the aircraft today. It's housed at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., and is extremely weathered from years of outside storage damage. The museum plans to one day restore the plane. There's also another known surviving example of the S-43. Known as N-440, it was once owned by the famed eccentric aviator Howard Hughes. It now belongs to an aviation enthusiast named Kermit Meeks and, according to the most recent update, is at the Fantasy of Flight Museum in Polk City, Florida, awaiting its own restoration. Thanks for watching. Out of this equipment, what did you find the most interesting? Tell us in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.